John Dunn is the costume designer on Julia on HBO Max. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. John, I wanted to start by asking you, you know, you've done many period pieces over the course of your career. Um, so what is it that drew you to Julia, which is again, another period piece, a kind of mid-century piece? Uh, and what was different about Julia than, than other period pieces that you've done? Well, um, Julia is something that I, I of course, as uh, uh, growing up in the period that I did, Julia was uh, on television as I, when I was young. And, um, and when I first started watching television with my parents uh, in the afternoons, one of the ways that my uh, mother would keep me busy was put me in front of, of Julia. And so um, she sort of imprinted on me, uh, sort of like a duckling. And uh, <laughs> I uh, found her to be such a fascinating character at the time. I didn't know anything about cooking then. And, and I have only since uh, begun uh, my journey with cooking and, and using her books. It, but um, it was a very interesting time in her life that is covered in our series. And um, I just found that really interesting because I, I think um, I didn't, I hadn't read a script about somebody who was going through an experience like Julia was going through at the age that she was and uh, sort of reinventing herself because um, we uh, meet Julia when she's just 50, I'd say. And um, she'd had an entire life already. And then suddenly she became a public persona. So I thought that was interesting. And, and of course, as far as period goes, it's got to be one of my favorite periods. 19, 1963, our entire series takes place in 1963. And again, that was a very, those were very formative years for me as a young person. And um, I always loved doing them. I, I remember uh, certainly doing Mad Men was not um, far from this period. I, I, and I did the original pilot on that. And I, it's just a near and dear period for me. But I'm, you know, it, what was interesting about this one was it was a, a, a new group, a, a new sort of subculture, uh, Cambridge, Boston uh, and WGBH environment that was totally different from what we had done in Mad Men. Right, of course. Um, and let's dig into some of the details that you're mentioning. So uh, the series does chronicle the first kind of year of Julia Child making The French Chef. And of course, this is when she really, she had written the cookbook, but this is when she's becoming a public persona. So I wanted to ask you, how helpful or how much material was there to look through in terms of photographs and, and video you know, how much, how much was, was there at your fingertips? Well, there was a wealth of, of documentation. First of all, um, Julia's husband, Paul Child, was a photographer. That was one of his, his um, hobbies. He's an artist, a painting artist, but also photography was, was his other love. And so he spent a lot of time photographing Julia. And, um, and so there, she, what she, um, her appearance in this point in her life is pretty well documented. Um, interestingly, the, um, uh, what we didn't have, um, and we do recreate them, is the first three or four episodes of, of Julia Child, because at that juncture, um, WGBH was not recording these shows, uh, or, or they did not keep them. Um, the later episodes did begin, but we didn't have actual footage of the very, very first um, uh, episodes of The French Chef that she created. But, um, and also we didn't have footage of her first appearance on the book show, which is where she really made the splash on WGBH. She uh, was on this, you know, very academic uh, half hour book show based in Boston, uh, very dry. And um, they brought her on to, because she had written this amazing book and the, the poor fellow who was the host of the show had no idea who she was and, and where she had come from. And I, I, she had this godsend inspiration to demonstrate cooking an omelet live on television. And, and that's where it really all began. So not, we don't actually have, we had no footage of those actual moments, but um, we had great fun reproducing them. But then after that, the show really took off. So there are 
shows that we can we were able to watch. And as she slowly became a, a public persona, there was a lot of uh, documentation of of, of her. Um, not always private photos, though. I mean, there were, you know, there were some of that that Paul had taken, but, uh, you know, she very much was a private person and a, a public icon. And the, and the two, um, in some ways, were quite different. Yeah, so let's talk about that kind of private persona, because, of course, you're recreating that kind of iconic look that she has on The French Chef in many episodes. But I'm really struck by just how vibrant the colors are when, when we see her in her personal life, um, always in very vibrant reds and blues and purples and layers, um, pearls. I, I wanted to ask about, you know, putting that look together and what are you conveying through your use of really bold color? Well, she was a very bold person and she was, very, you know, she was, as we know, physically, you know, large, tall, in, you know, um, very, uh, imposing person physically. And I think it took her a while to, um, when I read about her and um, it took her a while to get comfortable with the fact, but once she, um, uh, she grew up in California. And so I think there, and she also had a sort of patrician upbringing. And I think there was a real um, sort of uh, waspy, crossed by California sensibility to her wardrobe that um, was really very much her own. And I think, uh, and, and, she, and we do have color photographs of her from those periods and she was not afraid of color and pattern. And so uh, we decided to really go with that. And um, even though, uh, you know, she was not, she didn't um, uh, exist in the public sphere when we first meet her, she was very confident in, in her, her um, who she was. And uh, I mean, she already lived an amazing life. She'd been uh, trained in a, 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 the Cordon Bleu School, which was predominantly men uh, in all of the classes and all of the chefs. And, and she had, you know, managed to get through all of that. And um, I, I she was a very, very confident person. She was also very private too. But, you know, as we see her out in public, she, again, had this very sort of like vibrancy to her that people were drawn to her. And I think part of it was her appearance and, and, and the way she wore color and mixed patterns. Right, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned uh, her husband, Paul Child, a moment ago. So I wanted to ask you about his look uh, working with David Hyde Pierce because uh, Paul's in a very unique moment in his life. He's just finishing his work um, as a diplomat um, and trying to find his, you know, his second act as Julia's finding hers. So I wanted to ask you about exploring that kind of character dynamic in, in the clothes that you're putting on, on Paul. Well, Paul, much like Julia, um, the two of them had, had you know, uh, very um, extensive lives. Paul's a little older than Julia, in fact, so he had even more life experience, but he had start, started out from very humble, um, a, a very humble place, environment. And um, through his life experience, he, he had been married to someone prior to being married to Julia. And that woman was very, very worldly. Um, and they, um, and he, she really pretty much, and she was older than Paul was. And she sort of almost took his education and artistic art education under her, her wing and, and helped him form himself as an artist uh, which he always did mostly consider himself an artist. And, um, and so even though he did work for uh, the government, uh, it was in the diplomatic corps and uh, he was stationed all over the world. They were in um, the Far East for a good long time. They met there actually. And then they lived in Stockholm, they lived throughout Europe. And, and Paul was just someone who was soaking all of that up the entire way. And um, again, was very individual and, um, and an artist. So um, that's really what we were inspired by with Paul, that, that it, he was even, I think, in some, he, visually he was more artistic than Julia was. And, um, and I think the two of them together sort of uh, uh, were creating a colorful world together is what was going on. And that was, I think was part of the magic of their relationship because I think they both communicated in, in not just verbal ways, but they communicated in 
how they presented themselves to each other and as a couple. Um, it, it was, they, they, when they went out together, they were both dressed and um, in very individual styles and, and, and from things that they had gathered from their extensive travels through the years. Speaking of styling them together, before we move on to some of the other characters, I just have to ask you about the inspiration for their matching pajamas, which we see <laughs> on multiple occasions, uh, the Paisley uh, prints and matching colors, just uh, so fun to see them uh, like that. So what was the inspiration for that look? Yes, I can't say that I, I don't remember that I actually read that they did such, th such a thing, but it was documented. But I do, um, you know, it was the, the the idea that they had this this sort of like secret club, the two of them, and 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 no one's ever seen them, you know, in their sleepwear. There's no photography, but there were definitely photographs of them in casual moments where they were just completely coordinated in their ensembles. They might both have striped T-shirts on, or you know, argyle sweaters, and it was all sort of very artistically put together and I just thought they really felt like they were you know two sides of the same coin and 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 mirror images of themselves and I think the one place that it would be really fun for them to be in identical clothing was in their very private place where I th really think they thought of themselves in, not as a couple but maybe as one unit and so that's that's where the inspiration for the pajamas came from. There's so many great characters on this series uh, and it's it's going to be hard to ask you about all of them, but I do want to at least ask you about um, B.B. Newworth's character, Avis, who we see in a lot of um, black and gray, very kind of uh, monochromatic colors. Um, so I wanted to ask you too about, you know, crafting her look. She's a character that seems to be in mourning. I don't know exactly how early on her husband had died, but, you know, what what's kind of the inspiration for her look and also talk about that one episode where you get to actually dress BB in that really vibrant red dress, because that moment really stands out, of course. Oh, yes, for the gala, yes. Well, the, the intent was that she was, she, uh, again, Avis had had a very successful career and had um, she was a editor and she had worked in New York for many, many years. And her husband had in our story, in our version of the story, had, had passed rather recently and, and she just sort of was, had gotten stuck in this place where she was in mourning and there was nothing, and she was of a certain age and there was nothing, there was nothing to get dressed for anymore. I mean, there was, there was no reason to buy new clothes. So we decided to keep her in dark mourning tones, like that, but, as dress her as if she had a stylish wardrobe, but she hadn't. And in fact, most of what she wears, you know, is probably four or five years earlier or off from 1963. We 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 dress her largely in in late 50s clothing, as if she had sort of like frozen in aspect a little bit, and um and and of course shied away from color. And so and and of course it was the intent as we knew the arc of the, the season, that she was going to have this moment where after, you know, finally experiencing this, this, this um, kind of rebirth along with Julia's rising as a, a, a new celebrity on television, um, and she was sort of like energized by this, that she would finally find a moment where she was gonna sort of break out of the black and, and, and just, you know, run, it, it's a flashback and a flash forward of, of BB or of, of, of Avis, um, where she um, is very, very elegant and stylish and, and, and loves color, but, but had, had not allowed herself that. And now she's um, going to move forward from that. Let's talk more about that episode uh, set in New York at the Waldorf at this, this lovely affair. Um, because we do get to see a lot of the characters from the series um, dressed in their best for that episode. But also, so talk about, you know, uh, maybe your favorite looks from that episode in particular, but also just uh, outfitting so many actors because you have a really large kind of back background ensemble for that episode and some of the other ones. So just talk about kind of the scale of the work. 
Well, it, it was ambitious. I think it may, uh, not only were we, we, we were filming a gala at the Waldorf, we were doing all the build up to that, which also involved going to find restaurants in New York, the streets of New York and, um, and, and Greenwich Village, we're down in Greenwich Village and we shot all of it in Boston. Um, so it was a challenge um, just to recreate those, those places in New York. And then I had to bring in a lot of clothing um, because we weren't using anything quite like that um, for the rest of the series. The rest of the series is primarily set in, um, in Cambridge and, and the environment there. And so um, it, it was ambitious and we did have to bring on a lot of crew and we imported a lot of clothing. Fortunately, the, um, you know, we had really nice, you know, Boston was full of wonderful extras who really you know, could play the part of, of, of the upper crust folks that we needed. And, um, and each of the characters, it, it really was a, a fantasy moment for each of them. So we thought long and hard about, you know, this is, you know, everybody was stepping out of their comfort zone in a way. And um, I, they had finally had an opportunity to just like re kind of revel for a moment in, in this incredible journey that they'd all been on. So it was really nice. It was so exciting to say, uh, dress uh, Brittany, who plays Alice, who starts out basically as an intern almost at, at WGBH. And then suddenly she's having this, this dreamy weekend in New York. So uh, we just took a lot of care to um, uh, get behind the thoughts of each character and what they would have chosen to wear um, in, this, in this particular setting. Yeah, and before I let you go, um, Julia is uh, ramping up to go back into production for season two. Um, yeah. I've, he I've heard some rumors from some other folks that I've talked to about where the season is going. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, any teasers you can share about uh, your work in particular for the next season, anything uh, you can kind of excite the audience with? Well, <laughs> well, it does. Um, I, you know, of course, I'm, I'm, you know, sworn to secrecy, I'm sure about most everything. What I, what I do know, though, is at the end of, of the series, as uh, season one, um, there was talk about Paul and Julia. Uh, well, we, we hear a phone conversation where Simka invites and, and, and implores Julia to come back to France because there's, they're, they're struggling to come out with a second volume of the book that they wrote together. This is Simca, who's played by Isabella Rossellini. And, um, and uh, they, they wrote the first book, which launched uh, Julia as the French chef. And, and, but now, of course, they, they, they had to follow up with their, with their um, is it their sophomore uh, effort of a new book. Uh, to wow everybody as much as mastering the art of French cooking. Um, so I would imagine it's very possible that we will be leaving uh, the Boston area and um, maybe heading over to uh, the south of France. Well, it's very exciting to hear uh, and we can't wait to see it. Uh, John Dunn, congratulations on the first season of Julia and thank you so much for talking to Gold Derby today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm.